we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time plumbing. Description. Sometimes you need to handle process data. Sometimes you need to, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Process data outside of a file. Can you find a way to keep the output from this program and search for the flag? Connect to this host and this port. We'll grab that. Then we see hints, remember the format. And what's a pipe? No, not that kind of pipe, this kind of pipe. And we're given an introduction to Linux pipes, which I'll give you a shorthand of all this explanation. Given a first command, you can take the output of that first command and pipe it into a second command, which then pipes its output into a third command, and so on, until you get ultimately what you'd like. Let's open the terminal, and we will connect to that host and port using netcat. And we'll see we get a ton of text out, way more than we'd like to read or go through. And I'll show you the first usage of pipes. I'm curious, how many lines is this? But I don't want to count. I don't want to put this into a file by copying and pasting. So I'm going to use word count, wc, with the minus L flag to get the number of lines. And we can see there's 10,001 lines. So we definitely don't want to go through that. What we'll do is we will use grep, and we'll look for pico. Grep is a way to search on string input. And you give it a search term. In this case, we're giving it pico. And we can see pico ctf digital plumber. Let's take this. And please don't turn the video off yet, because I'm going to talk a little more about pipes. And I'm going to show you some usages of them. So for example, currently, we're just looking for pico. But maybe we're curious, how many times do you say not a flag either? Or again, I really don't like this flag. Well, a way to quickly find that would be, let's search on not a flag either. And then let's take this output and let's pipe it through into word count. So you understand all these commands. You know what netcat does. It gives you all this text output. You know what grep does. It searches for this search term. And then finally, word count gives you the line count in this case. And we can see there are 3,922 lines. Let's do something else instead. Maybe we only want to get the top 10 lines that this finds for whatever reason. We could use head, and we would get the top 10 li li lines. I can't speak this morning. Tail would give us, and I realize this is not that interesting because they're all the same. But what we could do is we could remove, for example, the search, and then we could just do a tail, and we could see the last 10 lines or the last 50 lines, uh, maybe it's minus, there we go, minus 50. So if we thought there was something in the first 50 lines that was important, we could use head. And then if we thought 50 lines is too much, that won't fit on my screen, we could pipe it to less. And what less is, is it allows you to paginate output. Well, I thought it did. That didn't didn't quite work. I'm not sure. Maybe head and less are not compatible. You'll have to play around with these when you're constructing your own pipelines. But less will certainly work. And now we can see we have some pagination. And if you look at the bottom, you'll see we have this prompt. And we can search for things if we use slash. And then pico, you could see it would bring us right to the first instance of pico. We did slash not. It highlights all the instances where it finds not. And by pressing N to go to the next, we could continue right down looking at this. We'll get into regular expressions and what you can put into this slash term later. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Bye.